In this video, what we're going to do is take a look at custom AOVs. Now, these are primarily used to create ambient inclusion passes, but can be used to create things like wireframe passes, individual masks, or even integrating MoGraph color user data. So let's go ahead and get started. So here's the scene we're going to be working with today. I want to point out that a lot of the models, actually all of the models, came from the asset browser here. And there is a growing library of Redshift objects and materials in the asset browser. And so um, while you know there's only 100 at this point, still some really good ones, especially if you want to create quick scenes to work with lighting or materials experiment. Um, not a bad place to get started. I believe these fabric materials are actually pretty new um, in the last month or so, uh, which is really great to see. And I hope they keep adding more of these types of um, free assets. Now, I'm also excited about the FUI examples down here, which I'm going to dive into and explore in a future video. But yeah, that's pretty much this scene, you know, the backdrop and the uh, the, uh, the wall here, backsplash, I should say, and the counter, uh, both have red uh, grayscale gorilla materials from them, uh, on them. And so I wanted to point that out. The dome light also has a grayscale gorilla dome light, but there's plenty of HDRIs to use there. What's also nice about the materials in the asset browser, I forgot to mention this, is that they are all the standard materials. So um, if you're trying to get comfortable with that, um, want to use it more, it's nice that these materials are all the standard material, um, which means they'll also uh, use the newest uh, node editor, have the standard material, uh, and um, we'll preview a bit quicker in our perspective view. So let's talk about custom AOVs. And really what I'm talking about is in our AOV manager, this guy right here. Now, primarily we use we use it to create an ambient occlusion AOV, not to be confused with the actual ambient occlusion AOV, which only works if you use ambient occlusion nodes and material. The custom AOV, if I just drag one in here, is going to allow us to essentially create a material override. Now, it's not quite a material override. We'll see, talk more about that here shortly but that's what it's looking for, some kind of special material. And the way we create that special ambient occlusion material is by going to the plus sign, going to utilities, and choosing AO. And then all we do is drag this into that default material. And if we want to preview that, this is one of the few um, AOVs that we can preview without turning on bucket rendering. So for puzzle mats, for instance, you do need to turn on bucket rendering in order to preview them. What's also really nice here is we do have some secondary ray options for refraction and transparency and reflection. And these may take a second to um, kind of calculate and, and work through. Also wouldn't uh, hurt to have bucket rendering turned on, but you can see how that can be a nice to, you know, help with any transparent materials because ideally we don't want any ambient occlusion in our transparent materials. Um, now, there's a couple of things we could do to take this a step further if we're still not happy with this because there's still quite a few dark areas inside of there, um, which may or may not look good. There's always the redshift object tag, which um, in the visibility section here, if you check override, you can uncheck casts AO and that will go through and get rid of it. Now, um, because I had that secondary ray visibility thing on, we may be getting some weirdness. Um, I would have expected it to just be oops, pure white. Uh, but because of that ray visibility, I think that's what is causing this. So um, if we just disable it, should um, be ignored by it. All right. So we'll see if that comes up. Actually, it doesn't appear to be making much of a difference. I'm going to chalk that up to not using uh, bucket rendering. But that can be one way to kind of exclude objects from ambient occlusion along with that secondary ray visibility the other option we have okay interesting maybe i'm no well, looks like i'm doing something in, oh it cast it's not receiving my bad got confused a bit there um so it's not casting ambient occlusion it still is receiving it so that is what i got confused about and i'm a little bit surprised there isn't a receives ao um, option here. Yep. So that's where that secondary ray visibility comes in, but also what we're about to uh, take a look at next. Because as I mentioned, transparent materials, you really don't want ambient occlusion on them. So what you can do is find 
those materials like a transparent glass that's on the blender here and use the store color to AOV. This is gonna be important for other passes as well, but we essentially connect this in line using the beauty input, outputting this to the surface. And then what we can do is choose what color we want this object to have and in what AOV it should be stored in. So I can switch this to custom, which is our ambient occlusion, because I didn't name it, and now set this to white. And what we should see is this becomes flat white. And what's nice about that is it no longer has ambient occlusion on it. So that um, can really come in handy. Now, since I changed the name, I might have broke the, the connection there. So um, I'm gonna go back to that glass material. And let's just dock this right here and make sure we stored this. Yep, do AO. And there you go. So it is based on the name, which is weird because very few things in Cinema 4D are actually based on the name, but that can be a way to exclude um, transparent objects or even objects that are uh, emitting light or have emission turned on in the material. So taking a step further, what is this RSAO material? Okay, well, all it really is, is just an ambient occlusion node plugged into the output. Okay, and so that can actually be useful for us to know and understand because it also means we can add other nodes instead of this ambient occlusion directly into our output. And we could use this to create other custom AOVs. Another useful one could be wireframe. So if I take this wireframe, connect it to our surface, what do you know? I'm gonna have an a wireframe pass. Notice how it was, it's still ignoring that. And this is where you may actually want to have that ray visibility. I keep doing that. I keep not opening my AOV manager, but um, that's where perhaps having the refraction and reflection um, might be useful as it could help us with our lines. Now, what I am a bit concerned about is that, yep, there is a lot of geometry in there from all the subdivision surfaces. So that is definitely something you need to consider when working with the wireframe, um, as we don't really have a way to control that a whole lot other than the wireframe thickness. You could also turn off um, show hidden edges, which could be useful um, and make a difference. But yeah, I mean, now we have a wireframe pass and with the exception of these jars, which um, are a bit too, have too much subdivision on them, or at least I thought they did. Uh, perhaps the thickness is still a bit too much, so we could always turn that down to like 0.1. Maybe we'd start to get something coming through there eh, a little bit, okay? You don't wanna go too thin or else you'll have to turn up some of your other settings really high to clean them up and make sure the lines don't become um, alias like that. And that's interesting that we're getting those diagonals from that. But yes, this is how we can get a wireframe pass. Now. Another thing you might want to do is to use a Fresnel. So this can be used a lot in kind of medical animations to make something a little bit more stylized. So having a Fresnel in there um, can also create some really interesting looks. And I find it really kind of neat how we're getting the transparency to work with this particular one. Um, we're not seeing a whole lot of that Fresnel really in other places, um, but Yes, I've used it, the Fresnel a lot in uh, medical animations because that is where you kind of see that kind of x-ray look. Um, and this is another way you can do it. So if we just turn that off, um, we, we're seeing the Fresnel a bit more um, in like on the jars and stuff. That's a really, really good place to see it. So that can also be helpful. Uh, now the last one is uh, going to help us see how we can use this with MoGraph color user data or really MoGraph color. So really this whole scene builds up. I'm going to have to find a different video to, to do more with this because I think it's a really cool scene. But I'm using MoGraph for um, our um, counter as well as the backsplash there. And if I wanted to uh, kind of create a mask just for that section, the part that's being applied uh, with that's having our field applied to it, that's where we can use our color user data. And what I need to do in order to do this 
is, um, let's see. Instead of this for Nell, we can create just a color uh, user data. Okay, connect this to surface. You'll notice everything now, if I was to switch to that, goes black because we don't have any color user data. If I come here to the presets, choose MoGraph, and I know this is off screen, but if you go to color, then you will start to see the MoGraph color information. And that we can actually see in our perspective view if we just turn off material. So if I zoom out a little bit, you will see we can see the purple, the green, we can see the purple, and that is all coming from our effectors, more specifically our fields. Um, now, it's pretty easy just to go in here and set the color manually, but you can also choose the gradient option. So what I could do, and I actually wanna do this more on the um, counter field, is select our linear field and switch it from um, color in the color remap section to gradient. And I have played around with this just a bit. As you can see, it does crunch things up a little there. But now we can see in this um, image what we uh, have what is having the field applied the most, and that will be closest to white, and as it gets less and less influenced by the field, the color gets darker. So this could be useful for applying to glows to just this section as it moves throughout there, um, among other uses. Now, really what I would wanna do is get rid of the green part here in this particular AOV. Um, number of different ways you could do that, including, I think this is gonna work, haven't actually tried this yet, where's the, the wall up here? So the wall material is this ceramic tile. Now this is one of the grayscale materials, like I said, it's not one of the standard materials and I really, really wish they would update that, but it's the same thing, gonna do a um, store color to AOV and it works the same way, right? So beauty input to surface, Okay, and what I can do is say, all right, in our AO, which is actually now this kind of custom mat, um, I want the color to be black. And it should respect that. All right, but it doesn't really appear to for whatever reason. So rather than try and troubleshoot it, maybe I'm doing something wrong, although I don't think so. What we could do in this case would be to come to the wall, come to its color, and, you know, just say no remap no color, all right? And that actually doesn't work either. So good news is we can just set the color to black. I was trying to avoid that. Um, that way, if you did wanna come back and use a different color, um, you absolutely could. Interesting that we're still seeing some of this here. A bit confused by that as well. But yes, that should, in theory, work um, to help get rid of that. Now, I almost wonder if at this point, the color user data is what's causing the issue. But yeah, now we're able to control MoGraph and get it in its own separate AOV. Even if we're getting other objects that we don't want, we should still be able to get rid of them. Um, but that's looking pretty good. And to just kind of take this a little bit further and to finish this off, you could create a custom mask. And you may want to do this for a few reasons. Oh, there we go. Now it's kind of actually not working at all like I would want. Um, but what we could do is if for whatever reason you didn't wanna put a specific object in a puzzle mat, right? Because puzzle mats using material IDs can be a bit tricky, um, especially on an object like this blender where um, you know there's a lot of materials here. Uh, that's where uh, object IDs can actually be useful in this whole setup. Um, but if for whatever reason you just want um, a specific mask for a, a single object, you know, perhaps the colors are fringing on you, you know, we do have some, some kind of overlapping in those pixels and those values, then a black and white mask can also uh, be something that we can do. So we'll just switch the name of this to mask, just so we're on the same page with this. And what I can do is select, I don't want color user. Yeah, I do want color user data. Um, what I'm gonna do is select our plate material here, which there it is. Great. Come in here, do our store color, color to AOV. 
not to be confused with the color user data, which I keep doing myself. Pipe that into our beauty input out to our surface. And what this will allow us to do is say, okay, we want this to be white in our mask. So we can switch to that. And when we re-render this, we'll see what we see. Now we're also going to need to go in and change that RSAO material, which we really shouldn't be calling RSAO at this point. But what we could do is really just pipe in a color to the surface. And that color can be black. So that should make everything black. We'll turn off. I don't think we need, yeah, we don't need a bucket rendering for this, but that will make everything black because that's what um, is in this. Oh, I keep doing that. Hmm. In our AO right here, that RSAO, and in that material, we have a specific color piped into the surface. And in our plate material is where we chose a different color. Okay, now this, you know, just to show you, could be anything. Now, what I really want to go with, red, green, or blue? Probably not, since, you know, at that point, I might as well use the puzzle map. But just to show you, you could tint things, get colors just on these objects to, you know, use for other purposes in After Effects as well. Um, you can do that too. Okay, so that custom AOV can be really, really useful for creating masks, wireframes, ambient occlusion, and even piping in MoGraph um, user data uh, to create custom masks that way. All right, so I think that is everything I wanted to talk about and cover here. So that will do it for this video. If there's anything else you would like to see, please let me know. This video, in fact, was inspired by a comment somebody made in one of my videos about um, how to uh, create um, some kind of mask for color user data from MoGraph. So, uh, that's all I have. Until next time, take care.